Hey Scott and everyone else, welcome to Four Running Shoes. I'm really excited to talk about today's topic. It's to do with lactate threshold. It's a new term that I'm learning more about and how to implement it into my training to see big improvements. But yeah, this video is about what lactate threshold is and also how we can best use it to improve our speed and our endurance as a runner. But to start with, I just wanted to tell you how my week's gone. It's actually been a pretty slow week again. I didn't hit my 35 kilometer goal that I set, but that's okay, I think. I'm learning to go easy on myself. I am decided to take it a bit easier. I think I hit about 20 kilometers, maybe a little bit less than 20 kilometers this week. Um, but I'm really working on next week, especially to in increase that. I'm gonna take it really easy, like go for 30 kilometers, not nothing outlandish, no skipping lots of mileage in a week. Um, and just do those steady 5k runs every couple days to yeah get me to that goal. So I wanted to talk about lactate threshold this week because I recently bought a heart rate monitor which pairs with my watch and allowed me to do a lactate threshold test which I hadn't been able to do before. So basically you just wear it around your chest and it tracks your heart rate really well and I used it in my lactate threshold test which is basically just running for a specific amount of time and my watch tells me the intensity that I should run at and yeah it tells you your result as far as what your lactate threshold is which I'll explain later but check out these videos about yeah how the test went. So I'm just leaving on my guided lactate threshold test. I'm starting with 10 to 15 minutes of warm-up slow pace which it's recommending so I'll do that and then I'll let you know how the, what the next stage is and how I'm going. So I've been running for about 12 minutes, just about to, I might try and go to 3k, it's about 2.6 at the moment, then around 450 pace, so it's a bit faster than I was expecting to be running, but it feels comfortable, so it's good. Um, so I'm going to keep running to about 3k's, and then I'll start, and that means, they say, just keep running, basically, and it'll increase in intensity every 3 to 4 minutes, so I don't know what that looks like, but we'll find out, I guess. Unfortunately, there was too much wind over the top of this clip, so I'll just have to talk over the top of it. But basically, I was saying I started off way too fast. I was running around four minute pace to begin with, and they only wanted me to stay between 164 to 174 beats per minute of my heart rate. So I managed to pull back to that, and hopefully it doesn't influence my result too much. So I got my heart rate back on track for the end of that first split. Now I've increased to 174 to 184 heart rate. So yeah, running 179 beats per minute at the moment, which is pretty in the middle, which is good. So yeah, I'll keep at it. Try not to talk too much because I think that might impact the results, but we'll see. Okay, it's starting to get harder now. This one is 184 to 194. I'm beat for a minute, so it's a bit more of an effort. I'm running four minute pace, um, yeah, 188 beats per minute. Two minutes more of this pace, and then we'll see if it increases again after that. Okay, so that was it. I'll talk about the results when I get back. I still miss it this but cool down recommend. I agree. <laughs> so I'll do that and then I'll chat to you about the results. I'll chat about my results in a bit, but to start with, what is lactate threshold? Basically, lactate is a byproduct of the energy that is extracted from glucose. It flushes out all the toxins in your muscle, so it's actually a good thing, but it needs to be removed. If lactate stays in the muscle, it's going to seize up basically, and it's not going to perform well. So yeah, it needs to be expelled from the muscle in order to make it work better. And that can actually be recycled as energy. So it's a really efficient system. So basically the goal to be a good endurance runner 
is to be able to ex expel as much lactate as possible in order to function your muscles at a very high pace for a long period of time. Check out this demonstration. Imagine that this cup is your muscle and it gets fed with glucose, which I'm going to represent by water pouring into it. And yeah, as glucose comes in, uh, it produces an, a byproduct of lactate, which needs to be expelled from the muscle. So imagine this hole is where the lactate gets, uh, take, gets expelled. Um, and so yeah, it's quite a small hole, so it takes a little while for it to come out. Yeah, so imagine that the water that comes into this cup is glucose that is fueling the muscle. Um, and so, yeah, it starts to produce lactate as it and needs to be expelled uh, and then recycled back into energy. Uh, so at the moment, the water level isn't rising too much. It's not uh, too dra straining on the muscle. But as we increase the intensity of the workout, the heart rate increases, the energy requirements of glucose are increased, and it starts to overwhelm the muscle and fill it up. And lactate is being produced uh, too quickly to be expelled. And eventually it overwhelms the muscle and is not usable anymore for exercise. So now imagine that this bottle is someone who's trained a lot better and is has a lot higher lactate threshold. So yeah, they have a, also need to expel their lactate, but they can use it much more efficiently and have a, a bigger hole basically in the bottle that will expel it quickly and be able to use it more functionally. Yeah, so this muscle obviously expels lactate a lot better. It is able to cope with a lot more stress than the other muscle, um, but it still has a point where it will begin to be overloaded and too stressed. And that is this muscle's lactate threshold where it can only support running at a specific speed for a certain amount of time before it becomes overloaded and not usable anymore. The results that I got from my lactate threshold test were my threshold was at 186 beats per minute for my heart rate and that was roughly me running at 4 minutes and 2 seconds per kilometre. That means that I should be able to hold 402 pace for quite a long time. You can see in my last attempt at a 5k that I was able to hold much faster than that, 353 per kilometer for five kilometers, but I was pretty exhausted by the end of that. So the lactate had built up too much for my muscles to function well. But if I was pulled back to more like a 402 pace, I could hold that for a much longer time, more like 45 minutes to that hour. So what's a good application for this? Basically, I can use it to establish realistic heart rate zones, like really accurate heart rate zones that I can use in my training. Generally, people split their heart rate zones into five different categories. For me, less than 149 beats per minute would be, of my heart rate, would be warm up pace. Between 149 to 165 would be what they call zone two, which is very low or moderate intensity that really helps with long distance running and endurance and actually helps expel that lactate. So zone two is one of the most effective ways to increase your lactate threshold, which is why we often talk about running at a low speed during the week rather than always going all out. And that's why we always prioritize our long runs. That's why I've been trying to run around the backyard to make sure that I can get those long runs in to increase this lactate threshold. You also have zone three, four, and five. Zones three and four are yeah, helpful for your aerobic uh, capacity. Um, four is more like your almost interval training and five is really anaerobic. So that's when you're really depleting your lactate and yeah, that's over 186 beats per minute for me. So yeah, that's really helpful to apply and to think about as I go out for a run. So I was able to test this out and do a zone two run uh, I ran four kilometers and had my watch beep whenever I was not running it within that range, 149 to 165 beats per minute. And yeah, just tried to keep my pace at a level that would hit that zone two. I did okay with that. I think around 50% of the time I was in zone two, which is really good. 
uh, and it felt easy and yeah, it's cool to know that that's actually going to help me in my maximum threshold. Yeah, so this week to come, I'm going to be running mainly in zone 2, taking it pretty easy and pretty much just trying to keep the routine and get those 30 kilometers done. Make sure to like and subscribe, especially if you enjoyed this video, let me know down in the comments. Make sure to follow us along and see how we go as we implement this training and yet yeah, grow as, as runners, I guess. So yeah, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.